Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today I'm going to be doing a two-part video. So today is the first part, we're going to be posing this character and on tomorrow's part I'm going to show you how to do a very nice clay render presentation inside of Blender. So we've all been there, right? We have a very amazing character, we want to present it to the world but it's very boring and it's in this like T-pose. And um, even though T-poses or this like B-pose is perfectly fine for like a production, game production, uh, because we're going to re and do the whole thing, for presentations it's just very boring. Even if we turn on perspective right here, it's not going to really make that much of a difference, right? However, in the new versions of Seaverse, we have something very, very cool called Proxy Pose, which is this one right here. There's a couple of things you need to know about this before we start. First, for this to work very like nicely, we actually want to merge everything into a single subtool. This is not the way that we were going to do it for production, but for, again, for just a render, this should work perfectly fine. So this is the original element that I have right here with all of the subtools separated, the T, the tongue, the eyes, everything. And that this one right here, it's merged and reprojected with new dynamics so that it keeps most of the details, as you can see right here. Once we have this, we're going to go here to geometry and to this option that says proxy pose. And in the proxy pose option, we are just going to say proxy pose. And what this will do, as you can see, is it will generate a like new Dynamesh version of our object in a very, very low res effect. And this is great because of this will allow us to pose the character a lot easier. And then we will transfer all of this like positions of the points back into our mesh. So let's do this like interesting pose where the character is kind of like leaning forward a little bit. I'm going to be using my uh, mask tool, so control to go into mask lasso. And let's start with this leg right here. So I'm going to mask this leg right here. Yeah, a little bit like that. Let's remove a little bit of the mask from the tail with control and alt. And then I'm going to control and click to soften the mask a little bit. This is going to give me a, a smoother transition of the whole things. Now I'm going to press W and I'm going to move the pivot point to the center of the leg to where the uh, femur head would be, which would be right around there. We can even like rotate this. If you want to have like the perfect movement, you can align this to the leg. And uh, once we have this, I can just like push this forward like this. Then I'm going to like, uh, actually, let's exaggerate the pose there a little bit more. So I'm going to push this quite a bit like that. And then we're going to mask the next area right there. Move the pivot point, smooth the mask and move the pivot point to the to the knee and get it like this. And as you can see now, it looks like it's doing or it's making a step forward. Now, uh, well, one thing that I've missed right there, let's rotate this so that it's completely straight. There we go. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other leg. Remember, we have uh, removed symmetry, so this is only working on one side of the character. And once we have that, I can invert the mask and bring the pivot point right there. You can press Alt and click on a point, and the pivot point is going to jump right there to make this a little bit faster. Let's smooth the, the mask right there, and we're going to move this leg. Oh, actually, kind of want to like mask that a little bit more. We're going to move this back, this thing for, uh, backwards, sorry, this thing backwards. And then we mask the knee. I can Alt and click right here. Make sure that we mask everything that we don't want to move. Push this up like this. And uh, I'm going to mask everything else here. And the little fingers right here. Kind of going to, oh, careful there. Moving things over there that we don't want. And that's it. So now it looks like a, like he's like stepping forward. Now I'm going to grab everything else. Let's turn off uh, perspective for now. Actually, I don't love the fingers right here. So I'm going to move the pivot point And let's do something like this. So there's like a ground plane, right? So now I'm going to grab everything else here on the torso of the character. And I am going to invert the mask, soften it a little bit, and make it move a little bit forward. Usually when we walk, we're like pushing our body a little bit forward. I'm also going to like rotate the character slightly to the side to give it a little bit more, uh, you know, an interesting look. I'm actually going to rotate it to this side right here. There we go. Now, the arm, the, the left arm in this case, is going to be swinging forward. So I'm going to select the whole arm right here. And again, going to the point right there. Careful not to mask things that we don't want. We're going to do this here. You can see that we get a little bit of deformation right there. The way to uh, like adjust that is to just like make the mask a little bit harder. Make sure that we mask that out. That's a little bit better. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to mask everything again. This is the hand. And I'm going to make the hand go down a little bit like this. 
And the other arm is going to be doing the exact opposite. So I'm going to grab the whole thing right here. We're going to move the pivot point here, push it back. And this already has like the sort of effect that I want. Maybe I'm just going to like mask the hand again right there. And just push the hand back a little bit like that. And then for instance, for the head, we can go back to the head. So move this out. Let's go to a top view. And we're going to rotate the head so that it's looking in a different direction. And as you can see, this is going to give us a way, way, way more interesting like look for the character because he looks like he's actually in a pose in motion, right? Uh, we could even do the same thing for the tail. So here's another trick. As you can see, the tail has a lot of things right there. If we go to control, we press control and drag, and that's going to mask out based like on topology. And that way we can mask the tail very nicely right there. And now there's a new couple of brushes. We've mentioned this on the live stream. So if you haven't checked the live stream, make sure to check it on our playlist right there. On the last live stream, I mentioned that the new anchor brushes. So we got this anchor right here and we can use this anchor rotate. I can uh, control or just click, click on the tip and then move this along. And as you can see, the tail is going to be rotating based on that direction right there. So I'm going to be rotating based on that point. So really, really, really powerful tool as well to, to pose the characters. As you can see, we can get this very, very interesting effect right there. And that's it. Once we're ready with the pose, the only thing that we need to do is we need to click on this proxy pose. I'm going to pause the video because it requires a little bit of processing. So here we go. And there we go. As you can see, after the proxy post is finished, the character is now post on the exact post that I, I gave it. And um, and we're ready to go on to the next stage, which is going to be the shading for this character. So you can imagine that this guy right here is going to have a, let's append like a cube. And this is going to be like the ground plane for our character, right? So I'm going to be showing you on tomorrow's video how to convert this into a clay render. So we're going to be doing a clay render inside of um, inside of Blender. Now you can see that I did miss a couple of spots right here. So for instance, the, the legs not really like touching um, the, the ground plane right there. Since it's a small change, we can definitely just go here. And uh, even though it's a, it's a heavy amount of geometry, actually it's the nails that I want to kind of like move a little bit. So I'm going to go right there. And we're just gonna like adjust this a little bit more right there. You can see that it uh, it's actually distorting things quite a bit. Oop. We might need to go a little bit higher, like right around there. Smooth the mask. It's not gonna be the same as with the proxy, but we should be able to just push this a little bit up. And then of course, feel free to um, like resculpt things. Okay, so just grab your your tablet, and if there's certain areas that are not like perfectly perfectly done. We can just re-sculpt there really, really quickly. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, my friends. We've, uh, we've posed a character under 10 minutes and we got a something that looks way, way, way more interesting. So I strongly recommend that when you're doing characters or when you're presenting characters, if you can give them a little bit of a pose, that's always a good way to, to showcase all of the amazing work that we did right here. I'm thinking about like actually rotating his head to the other side because right now the silhouette looks a little bit weird. So I kind of want to see the silhouette of the face going this way. Um, so I'm going to go back to proxy pose and that's probably the one that you saw on the thumbnail. But yeah, make sure to subscribe down here. And if you want to support the channel, make sure to check our previous premium courses as well, which is going to be on the description. We have a great Discord channel, which you can join to share your stuff. And I'll see you back tomorrow for the continuation of this project where we do a nice clay render inside the Blender. So hang on tight. And I'll see you back on the next one.